Good morning and welcome to First Unitarian Society. I'm Kelly Crocker, one of the ministers here. Today I am joined by Reverend Roger Birchhausen, Drew Collins, Linda Warren, Heather Thorpe, Daniel Carnes, Stephen Gregorius, the Mortensen family who will be sharing a piece of their FUS story, and the Steigerwald family who will lead our chalice lighting. We are so glad to have you joining us virtually today. Though not together here in this cherished gathering space, we remain tied together through the bonds of community and affection. Here in this community, we gather to grow our souls, connect with one another, and embody our UU values in our lives, our community, and our world. Roger's sermon today is about partnership, especially our congregation's partnership with the Unitarian Church in Najoita, Transylvania. If you would like to learn more about Unitarian Universalism across the world, Roger warmly invites you to come to his class this Tuesday evening. You can find details in the red floors and at the bottom of our homepage at fusmadison.org. We hope you will join us for the virtual coffee hour immediately following today's service. The information for that will be on your screen again after the postlude. And I invite you now to join in a moment of silence to center ourselves and bring ourselves fully into this time as we join together once again in community. words come from Reverend Arianto Negroho, the president of the Unitarian Church of Indonesia, quite a new and exciting community in our global Unitarian Universalist faith. Today, we are celebrating First Unitarian Society's long and wonderful partnership with the church in Najoita and the bonds of love that tie us together across this world. We live in a time full of sorrow. Many lost their beloved because of COVID. Many lost their income because of economic crisis. Many became victims of natural disasters. Many suffer because of conflict around the globe. We live in a time of uncertainty. We are in a time of examination, living more egotistic lives to save our own self or strengthening our community so we can survive together. We need the light, but do we have the discipline of spiritual works? It can feel like all of our energy has run out to think, to work, making income, and we just don't have enough time. Then I see that when a storm tears down a big banyan tree, the same storm can't destroy a bamboo grove. I want to walk in that bamboo way because I don't want to stand alone in the middle of a storm. I choose to stay strong in faith, just as the bamboo has strong roots. I choose to renew my hope, just as there is flexibility in the bamboo. I choose to keep loving others, just as the bamboo grove survives together. Right now, three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I invite you now in lighting a candle or a chalice in your home as the Steigerwald family leads us in our words of affirmation. In times of hardship, we stumble towards the tiny flame. In times of cold, we seek the warming fire. In times of confusion, we reach for the lamp of truth. In times of loss, 
we pray for the comforting light. In times of joy, we light a candle of celebration. Spirit of life, as we kindle this light, help us find what we need this day. Here, can you hold this out a little bit? Since Roger's talking about partnership today, we wanted to come to you from our partner church area. If you haven't been here in this part of our building, this is where our landmark building and our atrium building meet. And in this area, you will find items that tell the story of our partnership with the village of Najoita. This is a partnership that started in 1992 back when Max Gabler and Ruth Gibson were our ministers, and after many, many years, congregations in the United States and Canada could once again have contact with our historic Unitarian churches in Transylvania. 
And so the Partner Church Council put out a call looking for congregations who would want to form this kind of relationship. And fortunately for us, Max and Ruth answered with a resounding yes. So in 1992, we received a message that this congregation here, that you will also see pictures of later on your screen, the village of Najoita, wanted to partner with us. And so with that letter came this. And I wonder if you have any idea of what this is. It, it maybe looks like a really fancy carved cheese board, or maybe just a beautiful wooden decoration that you would hang on your wall. This is actually a laundry paddle. And I want you to think back to a time before washing machines where maybe you needed to go down to the river to wash your clothes and your blankets and your sheets. And a laundry paddle is what you would use, not one as fancy and beautifully carved as this, but a laundry paddle is what you would do for with your wash. So we received that in the mail in 1992. And what happened was that one of these, this embroidery, was sent back to the village. So you'll see it has a picture of our landmark building. It also has the quote from the landmark building. Do you have a loaf of bread? Break the loaf in two and give half for some flowers of the Narcissus. For thy bread feeds the body indeed, but the flowers feed the soul. So the folks here of our congregation sent one of these back to Najoita. It still hangs proudly there. What we didn't know at the time was that we were recreating an ancient ritual of partnership. In Transylvania, if there's someone that you would like to marry, what you do is you carve a laundry paddle and you give them that laundry paddle. If they accept your proposal, they in turn will give you an embroidery. So unbeknownst to us, we were reenacting an ancient ritual of commitment and partnership and love. And we have been extremely fortunate to keep this partnership alive and growing now for 29 years. So that's the beginning of our story. You'll hear more from Roger later about the ongoing story that we share and the life that we build together with the folks of Najoita. And now we have greetings from our partner church minister in Najoita, Reverend Feketa Leventa. Dear brothers and sisters in medicine, we greet you with much love Hello from Magyarita, from the Unitarian Parish. With the occasion of the Partner Church Service, we think to you all with much love and friendship. We are touched when we are thinking that 29 years of our partnership passed so quickly, which started with our first meeting when a delegation from you, from Madison, came in Magyarita. It happened in August. In 1992, as you know, it is a very nice, our commune history. And from the meeting became friendship. A soul connection, which connect people who live from thousand miles far, East Europe and America. Our languages are different, but our soul and faith a commune. You have come from which with much love and we waited. You also with much love. You have thought to us and from so far you helped us too much. We could thank a lot of from you for you. The partnership group who have thought a lot of us like real sisters and brothers and you felt the importance of our problems together with your enthusiastic ministers like Ruth Gibson, Mark Gabler, Kelly Crocker, Scott Prinster and now Roger Berchhausen and of course Mergy and Pete who are also the soul of this wonderful, beautiful partnership. 
Our partnership developed step by step, as you know, because you were interested about us and you always tried to find the way how could you help us in this way has bored the scholarship program. By this you could help a lot of students in their studies during these years who are grateful for your big generosity and we are also grateful for the continuous musical director support and of course for the youth program support and for me when I was sick I had heart attack. We received from you enormous help and this way we could organize tribes, camps, thanks for your wonderful support, camps for children year by year and this beautiful blessing house we built with your support and love. We will never forget our meeting here in Nogyoyta and in Madison. Our lives, is it in changing? Our lives, is it in changing in this pandemic time? As you know, you are always welcome in Nogyoyta. We hope that it, it can happen as soon as possible. We hope so much that we can be together on the festivity of our renewed fortified, fortified church next year. God bless you all. We feel, we feel that this partnership will never end. We believe in it. We wish you a nice celebration with much love. Levente, Jutko, all members of our church from Nagyoyta. God bless you. Bye bye. I first ventured beyond the confines of American Unitarian Universalism in 1999, when the congregation I served in Appleton became a partner with the Transylvanian Church. A dozen years later, we added a partnership with a UU church in a village of mostly subsistence farmers in the Philippines. My engagement with our global faith deepened from 2016 to 2020, when I served as executive director of the Unitarian Universalist Partner Church Council. This organization supports partnerships across the world, including FUSs with Najoita. I have learned so much about our global faith and partnership over these 22 years. I have learned a lot about myself and about my own individual faith. Another, another treasured part of partnership experience for me has been the opportunity to develop friendships across the world. I'm so fortunate to have Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist friends from Colombia to Transylvania to Northeast India, the Philippines, and Indonesia. And I feel like I have good friends in Najoita too, after a brief but lovely visit there in 2018. The high point for me in that visit was staying up until the wee hours talking with Reverend Leventa and Yutka as they graciously opened their home to me. So here's some of what I've learned in partnership over the, in, over the years. In Transylvania, I learned a lot about the most important roots of our faith. Our faith goes back there over 450 years. I'm reminded by my interactions with Transylvania that our faith is not some new fad, even something that goes back a couple hundred years in this country. Its deepest roots are in the soil of Transylvania. In the Appleton congregation's partnership with the Philippines congregation, I learned also about the breadth and width of our faith. Experiencing such a vibrant UU faith there made me realize that we were probably selling the possibility short in Appleton for our congregation. We too often bought into the common American UU delusion that our faith really works well for highly educated, middle and upper class, mostly white people, and maybe not so well for other people. 
If our faith can fly high in a Philippines village of mostly subsistence farmers, maybe, we learned, there would be more interest in Appleton than we were thinking. Maybe there's more potential in Madison, too. Another thing I've learned is that American Unitarian Universalism is not the pinnacle of our global faith. Too many of us here embrace what I have come to call spiritual Darwinism. Like social Darwinism, it's um, a misinterpretation of Darwin's theories. Spiritual Darwinism is the idea that, that, our, that our Unitarian Universalist global faith is an evolutionary pyramid. And guess what? We're at the top, of course. In Transylvania, this is often translated into viewing our partners as spiritually primitive. We believe that over time, you know, they'll outgrow those Christian superstitions. We don't really take their faith seriously. We don't imagine that we might actually learn something from their Unitarian faith that will impact and change our faith here. A story to illustrate. I'd say about two-thirds of the congregation I served in Appleton were former Catholics. A number of them had unresolved, powerful issues with their Catholic upbringing. As I shared at the Christmas Eve vigil here last December, the minister of the Partner Church um, visited one Christmas, and I invited him to lead a Transylvanian-style communion service at one of our Christmas Eve services. With four services that day, I figured that people who might somehow be offended by a Transylvanian Unitarian Christian communion service would simply go to another service. To my surprise, a lot of former Catholics with issues showed up for that communion service. Many said they came out of curiosity. I had a sense that a few came with the expectation, perhaps even the hope, that they would be offended. None of them planned to participate. Several were kind of sitting like this. Well, much of the Transylvanian Unitarian Communion Service looks and feels like a traditional Christian communion service. But as I said in the Christmas Eve vigil here, it is thoroughly Unitarian in its theology. It focuses on remembering Jesus' teachings, especially about love, and honoring him as a person, not as a divinity. It is completely symbolic. Well, for some of the Catholics that night in Appleton, the juxtaposition of a familiar ritual with a very different theology just broke something open in them. Most of them decided to participate. Many came forward with tears streaming down their face. The Transylvanian communion ritual unexpectedly brought them a moment of healing and wholeness. You see, encountering a distinctly different version of our UU faith can cause us to see truths about our faith, about ourselves that we might have missed. Our partners have gifts for us, too. Our global faith is not an evolutionary pyramid with us at the top. Another thing I've learned is that partnership is not about charity. And that's true even when there's a massive disparity in wealth, even when we often send money to our partners. And so it's not about North American Unitarian Universalists saving Transylvanian Unitarians and others with our largesse. Transylvanian Unitarians saved their own faith as it came out of the difficult years of communism. I'm not saying our money didn't help. I'm sure it's helped. I'm sure folks in Najoita would tell you that. But that is not the point of partnership. Ask your partners why they're in the partnership, and they're going to talk about relationship, not money. They'll talk about sharing our lives and our faith, our struggles and our dreams, and most of all, our love with each other. 
partnership is about mutual relationship. My heart broke a couple years ago in my partner church council work when I talked to the leader of a long-time partnership here in the United States. I talked to that leader because they had decided to quit the partnership. I asked her why. Her answer, because they don't need us anymore. So for this partnership, the fact that their partners in Transylvania became more financially self-sufficient was bad. What a failure of partnership. Another thing I've learned is that disagreements between partners is okay. An example. In 2017, the Hungarian Unitarian Church Synod, that's the governing body of the Hungarian Unitarian Church in Hungary and Transylvania, approved a statement affirming their state definitions of marriage as being between one man and one woman. And this the statement passed by more than 85%. We North American Unitarian Universalists are in a different place on this issue. So why did the Hungarian Unitarian Church Synod choose to make this statement? Some Transylvanian Unitarians have told me that this simply is where the vast majority of Unitarians in Transylvania and Hungary are in their beliefs. And I would point out, not all that different from where most American Unitarian Universalists were in the 1970s and even 80s. Other Transylvanian Unitarians told me that the vote was about alignment with the Hungarian government, which strongly opposes marriage equality and LGBTQ inclusion. Since Transylvania was given to Romania in the treaty that ended World War I, ethnic Hungarians have treasured their identity and often been persecuted for it. The current government in Hungary has taken remarkable steps to connect with and support ethnic Hungarians in Romania, including by offering citizenship. Others have told me there that as an oft-oppressed minority, they avoid anything that separates them from other ethnic Hungarians in Transylvania, most of whom are Reformed or Catholic. And the Reformed and the Catholic churches both have strong stands against marriage equality. Still others have told me that the synod vote was all about money. The Hungarian government is giving millions and millions of dollars every year to the Transylvanian Unitarian Church and other ethnic Hungarian institutions in Transylvania. And honestly, this is far more than American partners have ever given. With good reason, folks there believed that this money spigot might be turned off if the Synod did not take this step. Well, I was a part of a group of global Unitarian Universalist leaders who wrote a public statement of concern about this decision of the Hungarian Unitarian Church. President Susan Frederick Gray of our UU Association in the United States and leaders of the International Council of Unitarians and Universalists signed this statement. So why did we vo voice our concern? Well, not because we had the authority to tell the Hungarian church what to do. We don't have that authority. We don't want that authority. Rather, we were motivated by concern for LGBTQ people in the Hungarian Unitarian Church and because some LGBTQ allies there asked us to speak up. We were also motivated by a vision of partnership that includes sharing deeply with one another, including when we have a disagreement. Too often we've avoided talking with our partners about anything where there's just even a whiff of disagreement. And so we end up talking about the weather and our families and our partnerships never get deeper. So I encourage American Unitarian Universalist partners neither to ignore the marriage equality issue or other differences, nor to try to change 
our partners overseas. Instead, let's share openly our point of view and let's listen to theirs. And let's offer support and solace to those who are fighting for change. And finally, I have learned a lot in partnership about commitment and fidelity. Partnerships spanning generations that survives and thrives can only happen if both partners are deeply committed and faithful. Kelly's message for all ages makes a great point of how in some ways partnership is like a marriage. We Americans are not always very good at the spiritual practices of commitment and fidelity. It's really important for us to know that there was an earlier movement of partnership between U.S. and Transylvanian churches in the 1920s and 1930s. There were actually over 120 partnerships in those days, including, I believe, First Unitarian Society. What happened to those partnerships? Well, with very few exceptions, the American partners lost interest and moved on. Being on opposite sides in World War II did not help. We moved on, and then we forgot about those partnerships. So I haven't found anyone here who knows the location of FUS's partnership in that first movement. We need to understand that whoever that partner was in Transylvania, they do remember, even though it's 100 years later, that they were partnered with FUS. If our partners in Najoita had a partner in that period, I bet they remember who it is. And surely they remember the story about how American Unitarian Universalists moved away, moved on from partnership in the 1930s and 40s. I have a sense that many Transylvanian partners have been wondering for 30 years when we'll lose interest and move on. So here the, here's another couple times where my heart broke in my UU partnership, partner church council work. One was when a new minister called me up and new minister of a long-time partner here in the U.S., and said, you know, partnership's not my thing. I'm going to try to kill it. A second one was when a U.S. partner said, we're ready to move on from our partner in Transylvania. Could we get one in Cuba? Yeah, they got bored, and they were looking at the newest shiny object out there. What failures of commitment and fidelity so I'm going to close with several suggestions for FUS in its partnership with Najoita. Always remember that your partnership is about mutual relationship, not charity. When you give money, give it and let go. Let your partners decide how to use that money rather than having you tell them how you think they should use it. Commit yourself to making travel financially accessible. Every trip you take should include scholarship money so that FUS people who can't afford to go can be part of the trip. And help your partners come here. Most Transylvanians don't earn enough money to come to the United States even once in their lifetimes. So this is an excellent use of partnership money. Seek ways to get youth and young adults involved in your partnership. You should not take a trip without bringing along youth and young adults, and this should be a focal point of your scholarship efforts. More people need to get involved in the partnership here. I am so grateful to Margie and Pete Marion, Ethel Biro, George and Alexis Gill, Polly Kelbs, Eva Wright, Rita Horvath, and Reverend Kelly for their decades of incredible loyalty and commitment to this partnership. But it cannot rest only on them. If it does, the partnership will die. These dedicated folks have been carrying the water for FUS and its partnership for a long time, and they're going to welcome 
more people to get involved with open arms and hearts. My dream of partnership teams and congregations is that, is that there's a mix of youth and young adults, middle-aged adults, older adults, and a steady influx of new people. If we were having this service in person here in the atrium, at this point I would do an altar call. Yes, I would call those forward in this congregation who want to get involved in the partnership in any way. Alas, we're virtual, can't do an altar call, so here's the next best thing. Let Reverend Kelly or let me know and we will connect you with the partnership team. And then finally, be faithful in your partnership. It won't last another decade, let alone 30 years, if there is not deep, widespread commitment. First Unitarian Society and Ajoita have a strong partnership. May you renew and deepen your commitment to your life-giving, faith-giving partnership with your spiritual kinfolk in Najoita. May it be so.
invite you now into this time of giving and receiving where we give freely and generously to this offering which sustains and strengthens our community within and beyond First Unitarian Society. Our offering this week will go in its entirety to support First Unitarian Society's partnership with the Unitarian Church of Najwaita. Your gifts help fund scholarships for high school youth and educational excursions for younger students, as well as the congregation's music program. You will see on your screen that you can donate directly from our website, fusmadison.org. You will also see our text to give information there as well. We thank you for your generosity and your faith in this life we create together. Today we take a moment to pause in recognition of the one year anniversary since COVID was declared a global pandemic, a moment to remember that time when we began to realize that our lives were about to change. We thought back then that we were going into our homes for three weeks. We gathered supplies, we started learning about masks, we made lists of movies to watch and books to read some of us started making banana bread and sourdough. What we didn't know then is that we would be here one year later, that we would still be in our homes most of the time, that we would be waiting for vaccine appointments, praying for those we love, that frontline and essential workers who've been through so much would still be struggling and asked to give more and more each day. We had no idea that over 500,000 people would lose their lives in our country alone, that the pandemic itself would be politicized, that so many would lose livelihoods and homes and those they love, that communities of color would be decimated by this virus, that we would still be longing for the simple pleasures of hugs, gatherings in person, dinners out, seeing one another's faces and smiles in person and not on a screen. And so we light candles today in recognition of grief and loss and longing. And we also share the light of the enduring powers of hope and love. If you'll join me in a moment of prayer with these words from Barb Friedland. For those whose deaths teach us the depth of love and the profound fragility of life, we bear witness. For the memorials and weddings and graduations that we cannot hold, 
this truth moving us to deeper patience and greater innovation, we bear witness. For the isolation we feel, loneliness measured in distances much greater than six feet, for new appreciation for the intimacy of simple companionship, we bear witness. For the technology, an ever-present reminder of our separateness, yet uniting us in new ways across countless miles, we bear witness. For the unholy intermingling of politics and public health and the acts of everyday people, caring for the forgotten, feeding the jobless, crafting masks when there were none to find, we bear witness. For resilience born of long-term crisis and creativity born of adaptation, for grief and remembrance, for all of us, the remote learner, the tired parent, the long hauler, the vulnerable elder, the essential worker, the makers of vaccines, the survivors, and the ones who live in memory. For all of us, one year later, for all of us, looking toward what comes next, for this moment, we bear witness. Blessed be and amen.
Although our opening words today do not come from Transylvania, and the image of a bamboo grove is not from Transylvania, I do love that image for partnership. May FUS's partnership with Najoita remain strong, just as the bamboo has strong roots. May it remain flexible like bamboo. And may we keep on loving each other just as the bamboo grove survives and thrives together. May you go in peace. Yeah.